Hi, I'm Lisa Sarges, author of Diary of a Fat Girl, How I Lost 140 Pounds, Overcame Binge Eating Disorder, and Learned to Love Myself After Weight Loss Surgery. Today I'm talking about change. I should do a series on change and why we're resistant to change. That would be a very good class. Today I'm thinking about people who want to make a commitment to something, but they don't. They don't start probably out of fear that they'll have to keep their commitment and do something terribly uncomfortable. That they'll quit and they'll have to suffer the disappointment. It's the disappointment that's stopping us. It hurts to make a commitment and break it and feel like crap about it. So it's very important that if you're like me, person uh, who needs to modify to start slow physically if you're doing a gym commitment or any big life change commitment um, to make it doable you know I did my 10 minutes on the bike today I sat real close so that my knees went up high I did break a sweat this was exciting for me I usually don't perspire I perspired it was delightful and I did some interesting machines to work out my legs and to to get this is getting better it's it's getting better like I can go back here without screaming in pain it's it's amazing and I'm not going hard I'm going smart you know what's the what's the saying go hard or go home well I'm going smart so I can go long you know you have to do things in a way that you'll stick with it so I'll talk about myself and some of you might identify that's what I do. I talk about myself so that other people can feel less shame and say, oh my gosh, me too. And feel some hope and inspiration and, and feel like, you know, there's someone who understands. And I do understand if you're like me, who has this inner child who is screaming to be loved and adored for exactly who she is. You know, I talk about my parents in my books. People are like, oh, are they upset? And part of me is like, well, they should have behaved better. They wanted to be spoken of warmly. But I love my parents. Don't, don't misunderstand. I love my parents. And I take care of them the best I can. Does that mean I see my mother twice a week like I used to? No. No. I have things to do. I have work to do. And other people I'd like to see in my off time. But I do go there. You know, there's times when I'm there four or five days a week. Stopping in, checking up going to the store for her, blah, blah, blah. And cutting my dad's fingernails. And, you know, he's 88. She's 94. She's very sharp. He has dementia. I'm not unkind to my parents because I talk about them in certain ways in my books. Don't even think that. But I digress. So approval is something we need as children. It is part of forming a healthy self-worth, a healthy self-image, a healthy ego, a healthy personality. We need eye contact and happy, approving facial expressions. You could do the research on this. I'm not getting into that right this second, but I'm saying if we don't get that or we have very busy parents who we read their body language, like they're exhausted by us or we're an inconvenience and okay, I'll take you to blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, that recitals tonight. I mean, these little things that people will say, oh, well, just, you know, look at the bright side. Look at the good things they've done. Yeah, I do look at the good things they've done. I'm also acknowledging that certain pieces of my personality that were formed very early need to be reformed as an adult. And so I reparent myself in certain areas. So when you have a screaming inner child that wants to be loved and approved of for exactly who she is, change feels like a betrayal and she screams and she rebels and stop trying to change me stop trying to shrink me stop trying to make me acceptable I'm sure people it's pride month I'm sure people who identify as LGBTQ and other initials uh, who have grown up with disapproving parents 
Boy, do they wish that they could be loved and accepted for exactly who they are. Why do you think they go to things like pride? Why do you think they go to, you know, progressive rainbow flag flying, you know, places of worship? Because they need love and approval as any human being does. So I'm talking about me and I'm talking about weight loss and fat was the worst thing you could be in my household. Um, we had a, a fat neighbor and my mother would say over and over, do I want to be fat like her? Keep eating if you want to be fat like her. My father and, you know, his buddies and my uncles made fat jokes all the time. Oh my God, it hurt. That really hurt. Calling each other fat, 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 fat. God, I'm, I'm fat. But, you know, I was always on a diet. I was always trying to change to appease them and others. And, you know, so, well, you know, she's trying the poor thing. Please. So we have this internalized issue of the inner child screaming to be loved and approved of. And when you try to change her in the exact way that you were disapproved of as a child, you're going to get rebellion. But you want to change, but you want to feel loved, but you want to change, but you want to feel loved. So we have to stop either oaring. We have to stop thinking that if I want to change my health, my size, my whatever we're changing, I'm trying to get more fit, trying to get some muscles, not muscle tone, not cuts. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm like, I have atrophied down to, oh, like a slug, like a sloth. My poor metabolism is in the, the pooper. You know, I need some blood circulation, some cheese, some flow. And then my screaming inner child is like, you're trying to slim me down again? Haven't I rebelled enough? Haven't I taught you enough that I'm just going to eat and regain and do what I want? Uh, uh, uh. You got to soothe her. I say, no one's trying to change you, darling. I love you exactly as you are. And look in the mirror. Now, this takes skill. It's hard to be on the bike at the gym and to look next to me in the mirror and see, you know, my thighs hitting my, my belly. That's hard. Uh, there's no model for it out in the world, except, it, I mean, there's no place to look at that as a positive thing, as a positive shape. I follow so many uh, body positive people on Instagram and, and Twitter, just to have different ideas about what a fat body means, and these beautiful fat models and wearing plus size clothes just to get a different idea, but a body in motion like that, it has always been part of some sort of weight loss program where people are being yelled at and cold names and pushed and overworked and shamed for having a belly like that. And that takes some difficult programming to get over and say, I love you. To look in the mirror and say, I love you. I love your shape. I love your pillow belly. I, I love the way you move. It takes practice. So take care of your inner screaming child that wants love and approval at the same time as you're trying to form new habits and do the new habits as gently as possible. I do not go over 10 minutes on the bike yet. I'm not sure when I'll do that. We'll see how I feel. You know, my left knee is giving me a, a bit of a hard time. I don't know if, if it just needs to be built up, some physical therapy, which is what I do at the gym, or if the, um, you know, both my knees are replaced, if I need to see my orthopedist and uh, start the journey of, of repairing it surgically, I don't know. I am going first with the building up the muscles in the knee. Hopefully that solves the problem. It'd be a lot less involved. and doing um, a doable amount. If I'm doing reps, and I like to do, I like to round it to 10. I'll do my 10 reps. If it's too tough, the next set of 10, less weight. I'd rather do my sets than overwork myself and be icing and heating and being exhausted because I have to go home and work now. 
I have work to do. I'm working on the book. I have two online classes that I need to attend to. I have proposals to write for full classes at the adult schools. I have an oils. Uh, I do aromatherapy. I have a, a, a customer coming over to pick up some lavender. I'm busy. I can't afford to be exhausted. So I'm not going hard and going home. I'm going smart so that I can keep this up every day. And today is day 13. Lucky 13. So be kind to yourself in your self-talk, in your activities, in the way you eat, sleep. Just be so kind. Listen to that inner screaming child that wants love and approval and love her. Love her fiercely. Love her kindly. I'll see you tomorrow.